Introduction to bonding. These are the things that we're going to cover. I'll put a link at the end of the end of the video because this sort of best jumps to topic two, and that is the properties of bonding. Right now, we're just going to look at the different types of bonding. So first of all, there's ionic bonding. Now, with all the bonding in chemistry, chemistry is uh, fundamentally quite simple, and it's just positive attracted to negative, uh, likes repel, uh, and so these two repel. Uh, and so what we're having here is a uh, positive attracted to a negative. So we have a positive cation. So this guy has uh, too many protons here for the number of electrons that it has. And this guy here has uh, fewer protons than the number of electrons. So overall, this uh, particle here has an overall negative charge. This particle here has an overall positive charge. And so they're attracted to each other and they stick together. And so the, the definition is the electrostatic attraction between ions, uh, between an anion and a cation. Uh, and so there's the anion and there's the cation. Um, so the cation, uh, because it has a T, uh, that's one way to remember that it's positive. So if you're looking at the periodic table, you can work out what the charge of the ion will be. So fluorine wants to all gain uh, one electron to have a full shell. So everything in this uh, this group down here will become negative one. All of these will be negative two. Uh, these will be negative three. This could be negative four or plus four, but that rarely happens. Um, and aluminium is usually plus three. Uh, all of these ones here, they'll just lose one electron to get a full shell. And uh, these will lose two electrons to get a full shell. And so you look at your periodic table to work out what the charge will be. You don't know with the transition metals what they'll be, so we usually write those in Roman numerals such as copper one and copper two if it's if it's plus one and plus two. So we'll do that a little bit in a little bit more detail. Uh, so if you've got cations, and cations they lose electrons uh, to become positive uh, in order to get a full shell. Uh, and so here you'll have uh, this one will have sodium will try and get the valence shell of neon. So if I just jump up to here, uh, sodium will lose one electron in order to get an electron shell that looks like neon. Uh, and so you'll have here, it'll lose uh, this electron on the outside and be 1s2s2p. So the Lewis structures is in the video following from this, uh, but just to jump in a little bit, um, so you'll, I'll show you how to draw the Lewis structures. But for the time being, this is just the Lewis structure here. And so what happens is one electron comes out. Uh, and when you're drawing ions, you need to do the square brackets and put the charge in the corner. Uh, and so that's how you do the Lewis structures for ionic compounds. We'll mainly be focusing on Lewis structures for covalent compounds in the Lewis structure video. And that's just a summary there of the most common cations that you're going to get. So you can suss it out from the periodic table. Moving to anions now, so they're the opposite. They want to gain an electron to have a full shell. So that one is chlorine. So chlorine is going to gain one electron to become argon. So uh, that's going to have one extra electron. So it'll be negative. Uh, and so you'll hear, you'll see, sorry, you'll see this one here. You'll just fill that up. And so it's much clearer with the electron dot diagram. Again, uh, once you've got a charge, uh, you put square brackets and put the charge in the top right hand corner. And you can see that we've added this extra electron in there. So it's Cl minus. Again, this is just a summary from the periodic table uh, on the ch possible charges that you can get, the most common ones. And just to uh, touch on uh, transition metals again, as I said before, if it's two plus, you write iron two. If it's three plus, you write iron three. Uh, if you're going to do the elect uh, the atomic structure, SPDF orbitals, remember to take the electrons from the 4s first. Uh, and then so if it's a three plus, uh, you can take it from the 3d5. Go back to those uh, videos there because there's also exceptions to rules as well that you need to take care of. And so just uh, an overview on these things. So if you look up your data booklet, you'll find the electronegative uh, negativity values. So the key thing with ionic compounds, it's it's a metal plus a non-metal joined together uh, because it's a cation plus an anion. Uh, but it's a little bit more clearer because these are a little, a little bit artificial, these uh, definitions that we've given you. Uh, so it's a little bit um, clearer if you look at the electronegativity values. Uh, and if you minus, uh, say, Na, uh, the electronegativity and Cl minus the two from each other, you'll find that the number is greater than 1.8. Uh, this means that the sodium and the chlorine is strong enough to steal the sodium electron. 
uh, and pretty much the electron stays mostly around the chlorine. Uh, for substances that are non-polar, such as a carbon-carbon bond, you'll find that it's fairly even. If you minus those two numbers together, you'll get zero, of course. Uh, and so there's an even pull on that, so the electrons are about halfway. Now, anywhere between all over in the uh, over this side or halfway is a polar bond, and so any numbers in between. Uh, 0 0.4 to 1.8, well this can be different depending on the textbook because this is an average, these average numbers. Uh, anywhere in between here is a polar bond. Uh, so for most bonding, it's not actually covalent, it's not actually ionic, it's usually somewhere in between. Uh, the extremes of having it uh, completely non-polar, well it's sort of easy for diatomic molecules or even bonds like this. Uh, but if you have an electronegative atom like a, an oxygen over here, it actually won't be 100% polar. It'll be slightly over here. Uh, still definitely non-polar. Um, so as you can see, these are just artificial categ categories that we've made up. What's actually going on is we're just trying to judge if the electrons are shared equally between the two atoms, uh, if they're completely unequally and they're just mainly over here, uh, or if they're somewhere in between. And so we've made up these terms called covalent ionic, uh, and then to describe the fact that they're often halfway in between, we've called it polar covalent. Okay, so just be aware that um, these are just things we've made up. Um, the universe doesn't care what words we use. The electrons are where the electrons are, and it's on a, a, a scale from here to here. Now, just uh, to mention the polyatomic ions, because we're going to jump into naming, these don't need to be memorized because they're in your data booklet, but I would recommend you actually knowing these ones here in bold. Uh, because they're so common, just for fluency to make life easier for you. Uh, you'll notice the ones with the less oxygens that become acids are us, not ick. Um, and so, and you'll, if you're doing biology as well, these are quite familiar. Uh, so they're basically covalent compounds that have a charge. Uh, so they're both covalent and ionic at the same time. So I've put one of those polyatomic ions down here. Uh, so how do you name them? Hopefully this is a revision from junior science, but if it's not, this is just a quick overview. Uh, and so what you've got here is you'll write the charges, the metal and the non-metal. Uh, I do a crossover trick because you just basically got to get the, the charges to balance. And so you don't write the one again. And so sodium chloride is written NaCl. Uh, and you need to go backwards. Uh, you just write the two elements, you chop off the ene and, and an ide. And you do that for both covalent and ionic compounds when you're naming them. Uh, this one's slightly different. You just need to be able to recognize that's a polyatomic ion and look up the table. Uh, and so that's how you get that charge. Magnesium, you go to your periodic table to get the two plus charge. I do this crossover technique uh, that gets these both to, to the same charge. So the charges are equal, six plus and six minus. Uh, make sure you put the brackets around there. So that means there's two phosphorus and eight oxygen there. And so that comes out to Mg3PO4 with a two on the outside of the brackets. Just quickly moving on to metallic bonding now. So metallic bond, I would just memorize this definition. Metallic bonds are the electrostatic attraction between a lattice of positive ions and delocalized electrons. I've underlined keywords that should get you marks. Uh, and the relevance of this, you really need to go to the properties video to understand how that affects the properties of metal com metals compared to ionic compounds or molecular compounds. So moving on to covalent bonding now. This is just about the bonding. So covalent bond is the electrostatic attraction between a shared pair of electrons and positively charged nuclei. So these things here are both pulling on the electrons with about the same strength, although one could be slightly stronger, but once it gets too strong, it's ionic. Uh, it could be slightly stronger and that will be a polar bond. And so this is just a graph to show you that um, there is a range. The electrons are in a range of places, either completely nonpolar, uh, completely ionic, or somewhere in between. And lastly, how to name compounds. You'll need to be able to memorize these, which are different to uh, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 of your hydrocarbons. So your hydrocarbons will be uh, methane, or if I do it as an alkane, uh, methane, ethane, propane, uh, oops, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, nonane, and decane. They're very similar. Um, so mono, di, tri, tetra, 
um, are the different ones. The rest start to be the same. Pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, nonane, denane. Yep, so it's the same. So just the, the first four are different for naming ionic compounds compared to the stems for organic chemistry. Uh, so monodiety, treachera, um, a little bit more logical, tricycle, dies, two, tetris, uh, mono, one. Uh, a little bit more uh, logical as far as the English, common English words are concerned with one, two, three, four. Uh, and so what you do, as I said before, you grab the last one, uh, add an ide to it. So it doesn't matter if it's ionic or covalent. You'll have the ide on the end. Uh, you never write mono at the start, uh, and then you just number them. So there's mono carbon, mono oxygen. So it'll become, don't put the mono at the front, so it's still carbon. Uh, keep the mono at the front, change it to an oxide, so it's carbon monoxide. Uh, so commonly this one would be uh, dihydrogen uh, monoxide. I still get kids asking me, do I want some dihydrogen monoxide, thinking that I don't know what that is, which is quite interesting. Um, and carbon dioxide, as you can see, carbon, so there's no mono at the front, oxide dioxide. All right, uh, so jump to the next, I'll just put a link at the top, probably should be listed that way, the, the properties of the different compounds. Uh, so there's a little bit more about different types of bonding and how that bonding affects the properties.